Father Miller here. Welcome back to the Nerd Father. Wanted to bring to you an article that I just came across from the Catholic News Agency. It appears that Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI gave an interview with an Italian newspaper today on which he addressed his resignation. Uh, if you remember, in 2013, he became the first pope in almost five, 600 years to resign at the age of 85. And eight years later, it's still going, thankfully. I'm grateful for that. But uh, ever since his retirement, there's been a lot of re er, conspiracy theories as to why he did it. And that was part of the reason for the interview. Anyway, as the headline says, also talking about Iraq, because Pope Francis is visiting there later this week, and President Biden. So let's dive into this. So Pope Benedict XVI addressed conspiracy theories about his resignation, uh, the Pope's visit to Iraq, and Joe, Joe Biden's interview. Uh, I guess it was published yesterday. No, today. Today. I'm losing track of my days. Anyway, uh, the Pope Emeritus said that he stood by his decision despite criticism from his friends on the 8th anniversary of the end of his pontificate. It was a difficult decision, but I made it in full consciousness, and I think it did the right thing. And it's hard to believe he's 93 years old right now, and he looks 93. Um, but again, we continue to pray for him. Uh, I like how he words this. Some of my friends who are a bit fanatical are still angry. Okay. Uh, they didn't want to accept my choice. I think of the conspiracy theories that follow. Some said it was because of the Vatican. That leaks scandal. Uh, if you remember, that's when the Pope's butler released confidential documents. Some said it was because of a conspiracy of the gay lobby. And some said it was because of the case of the conservative Lefebvre theologian Richard Williamson, which if I remember correctly, he is a Holocaust denier. He was one of the four bishops that was excommunicated by John Paul II when Archbishop Lefebvre ordained new bishops without papal permission and under canon law that carries the penalty of excommunication not only for the guy that ordains them but for the one being ordained itself. So um, Pope Benedict lifted the excommunications I don't remember probably nine ten years ago and then it came out that Richard Williamson is a Holocaust denier so the excommunication was reinstituted. Anyway, they don't want me, they don't want to believe in a choice made consciously, but my conscience is fine. And he also underlined that there's only one Pope, Francis, rather than two. So, so as it says in here, Pope Benedict became the first Pope in almost 600 years to step down. And I remember the day that it was announced, uh, it was February 11th, 2013. I got up early, probably 5.30 in the morning, turned the news on, and there it was. The Pope is going to resign at the end of the month, and really was not expecting that. I was beyond thrilled when he was elected. I didn't get to watch the, the, the smoke coming out because I remember on the day that John Paul II, no, the, the day that Pope Benedict was elected Pope, I was attending the funeral for a priest in Philadelphia that was assigned to, the, that was at my parish that it was assigned to for my apostolate. Anyway, I, I remember when we were coming out of the funeral, the pastor was shouting Habemus Papum, and we ended up gathering, a bunch of priests gathered around the TV to watch the news, and um, I was giddy. Uh, some of the priests there were not giddy, so I don't think they were big Benedict fans. But anyway, he was the Pope for eight years, and as it says, it was overshadowed by the publication of documents known as the Vatican Leak Scandal. Uh, the Italian media speculated on the existence of a gay lobby at the Vatican. I heard stuff of that. I don't know. Uh, then, okay, there it is. So... 2009, so I was close, 10 years, no, 12 years, 12 years ago. So Benedict lifted the excommunication of the four SSPX, Society of St. Pius X, bishops, including Williamson, and after that, 
It basically the interview were led to the bishop's conviction for Holocaust denial. Did not know that part. Didn't know he was convicted. Anyway, uh, the, anyway, the German Pope wrote a letter to the world's bishops in which he acknowledged the controversy could have been avoided if Vatican officials had researched Williams, Williamson's statements on the internet. And in the interview, Benedict also said he was praying for the success of Pope Francis' trip to Iraq this week. He, he unfortunately falls in a very difficult time that makes it a dangerous trip for security reasons and for COVID. And then there is the unstable Iraqi situation. I will accompany Francis with my prayers. And this part here is interesting. According to the Italian newspaper, Benedict also commented on U.S. President Joe Biden saying, It is true he is Catholic and observant, and personally he is against abortion. But as president, he tends to present himself in continuity with the line of the Democrat Party. And on gender policy, we still don't really understand what his position is. So that was from the Catholic News Agency. Uh, again, as I said last night in my live stream, just to pray for the Holy Father's trip to Iraq this week. Because it is coming at a time when there's a lot of fear because of the pandemic uh, and as it says the unstable situation in Iraq uh, anyway it's he arrives on Friday and then flies out on Monday so I'm gonna try to cover that on this channel so uh, if you haven't already hit the ring bell so you can be notified when new videos are uploaded so until next time God bless